today's video I want to show you all about the MetaQuest Pro from a developer standpoint. I've been using it for a couple of days and I really love this device. So I want to show you what applications I'm using, which is in my case, I'm just using Immerse VR. And Immerse VR is really, really cool and really powerful because basically you're going to be getting rid of all this big equipment and just concentrating on what's important. You're going to be wearing a device like this. Basically, I'm using the Magic Keyboard. I'm also using a mouse that I really like. They're both Bluetooth. And then all I really have is just my desk, which is what you're seeing on the side. And basically multiple screens. So you can start with two screens, one screen. You can add virtual screens, as many as you like. They do recommend to stick with at least three or four screens. And I tested it with three and four, and it works really, really well. This application is cool because you no longer have to worry about you know having the physical monitors everywhere i can focus i can bring in windows i can you know i can basically change the order of where the windows are going to be i can basically just multitask with a mixed reality device so this is really really cool technology i'm also going to be showing you how we can capture face expressions as well by using the sdk for unity which i announced in a couple of tweets in the last few weeks and I'm also going to show you how we can use eye tracking. So I built a demo to show you how that works. It's actually pretty simple to implement with the right permissions that we're going to be implementing and showing you with the API that the Oculus integration provides. And then lastly, I want to show you body tracking, right? I think body tracking is one of the things that people are more excited about. And I'm also going to show you a little bit of a secret that I think Meta is working on. And we all know that body tracking based on the images that we saw from Meta was going to be the entire body. Well, there's a couple articles available which I'll link in the description of this video that basically unveil that this is not true. And, and it is true, but I want to show you what I found by experimenting with the SDK towards the end of this video. So make sure that you stick around. Just like the Meta Quest, this box looks very similar. You guys can see that the design of the box is pretty much the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what is inside here. So, ooh, this feels good. It's going to get it open here. And for those of you who don't know, the MetaQuest Pro, it's kind of like an enterprise device that Meta is pushing to enterprise customers. So this is the first step to actually making something similar to, you know, what Magic Leap is doing. I know Vico is also releasing a device that is very similar that is going to be for enterprise with pass through. So this one is 256 gigs. It also has 12 gigs of RAM, so a lot faster and double the speed of the previous generation. And that makes sense because it's more for enterprise type customers. So let's go ahead and get this going. All right, let's get this bad boy open here and see if we can see what's inside. So here we go, the MetaQuest Pro and really excited about it. But anyways, this is it. This is the MetaQuest Pro device. You can see the glossy. There's actually three cameras up front. There's also a camera, a camera on the side here and another camera. So this is supposed to be about five different sensors inside and out. And the reason for that is because there's going to be also pass-through cameras. And the pass-through that we saw on the MetaQuest is, is actually black and white. So this one has RGB cameras, which is really cool because it's going to allow us to do more of a mixed reality experience. There's also a connector here if you wanted to charge it with USB-C. So this device has a Snapdragon XR2 and, and it's the Plus. So this one is a lot faster. It's about 50% faster than the previous uh, generation so we should see you know more performance experiences it's not meant for gaming again this is more for uh, an enterprise so i'm just going to put it right here so you guys can can see it the controllers here as well they have their own processing unit so it's really crazy because the MetaQuest pro has uh, a qualcomm snapdragon like i was saying there's also processors of, on these two and if you remember on the previous version of the Quest Pro, we used to have a ring uh, across and that was used for tracking, where this one have their own uh, mechanism of tracking, which is using, there's two cameras on each side right here. And there's also one camera on the top. There's also two different buttons. You still have, you know, your little joystick in here. You have your trigger button in here and one here on the side. So these are supposed to be, you know, 
better and they're gonna be selling them separately that's what i heard because people are liking these a lot there's also magnets on this one so once we get the charging station you're gonna see those as well so it's gonna put them right here let's see what else we have in here so if we get back in here to to the box let me get these out there's this silicone material it says right here protected cover and it's supposed to cover the the front facing of the device even though i saw in some forums that people were complaining that they couldn't really use it while it was charging well it's really not meant for that it's meant for like if you want to protect it and leave it you know in a place and you want to make sure it doesn't get scratched that's where this is going to come in handy and you can see that this actually looks really really cool so here's the protective cover and we can see it from all sides there is also you know this is completely standalone so there's really no need to get the computer connected to this device so you can also adjust it in here if you wanted to you know make it smaller if you have a, a larger head and you can do that there's also you know this looks like the elite strap because it's it kind of reminds me of the 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 bubble vr uh, accessories where it's more you know it'll fit better on on your head so let's go ahead and get this open here and see what else is in here so on the previous version of the lenses there used to be a this device doesn't have like more resolution like they the resolution is still the same which is i think it's 1920 by 1800 but the the technology the optics was completely revamped they're using it's it's more like a slim down version of the optics there's also this box that i wanted to show you that also has additional accessories let's see what we have in here so we have our charging you know a little power adapter here so it's gonna put that here and then you know probably our USB-C cables are also included there's one in here that comes with the like the magnet to be able to charge the actual controller so if I were to take this out here you're gonna see that one of these cables is going to be for the controllers so you guys can see here that we can also charge the controllers if we wanted to and the last part that I want to show you is also the docking unit which I'm going to get it out here and it's actually hidden right here under the main compartment and we can get it out as well so here is the the docking unit and it has the three pins that i show you which are going to be for the to be able to snap the controllers and then if we go here inside let's see what else we have there's probably additional cables or pads that we can also use okay so this is what's called the the basically it's going to cover the light from coming in there there's an additional accessory that you can get to completely cover it but we're going to be also looking at this okay so if you want to use the controllers and, and basically charge it you're gonna see there's actually three pins in here that are going to attach to this docking station as soon as i do that they're going to attach so the headset though like i said the cover actually covers the pin so if you notice there's gonna be the two pins here on the bottom which they have to be in contact to be able to charge it but if we want to charge it all we really need to do is just basically set it in there and then as soon as you do that you have your beautiful MetaQuest Pro device in here so honestly this looks super super cool I also made, made a couple of little stickers in here so let me get those out of the way and then these two covers in here it'll tell you here if this one is for the left side or the right side and this is to basically cover any light from coming through so what you can do is you can basically just snap it in here and it has a little magnet it magically uh, you know attaches to the device and you guys can see how that now covers this side right here and also covers this other side over here so honestly this thing feels solid it, it looks it, it's just beautiful though the three cameras up front look super super cool so i'll show you uh, a take of that and yeah it just looks really cool there's also uh volume in here if you want to control volume up and down also the power button in here there's also a, a 3.5 connection for the headphones so if you wanted to use headphones you can use that and just like the MetaQuest device this actually comes with speakers so you can just use the speakers that come with this device so honestly this doesn't look like the image that was leaked in social media this looks really cool and there's also a dial in here if you wanted to adjust you know this part here of your forehead and then the one that you have in here you can also 
also adjust. The IPD, unlike uh, you know the Varjo devices, is not automatic. You basically just have to manually adjust them. But I think it's you know to me it's not a it's not really a big deal. So this is it. This is the Meta Quest Pro. So let's go ahead and test it out. All right, guys. So this first demo uses eye tracking technology. I can move my head, and the two spheres with the line renders, one for the left eye and one for the right eye, are also moving. I can also use look up. I can look down, look left, right, up, down, left, right. You can see how it's immediately reacting to my eye position. The other thing that I can also do in here, I could move my head around. And, and the reason why this works is because I'm also using the camera rig tracking space to place some of these objects either on the left or the right anchor. Okay, so for this demo, I wanna show you how the actual face expressions are working. So I'm gonna see, you guys can see that if I smile, the avatar changes. I can also move my hands. I can also, you know, move my, my body completely and then rotate my head and you know this is really impressive let's see if i can move my so there's multiple blend shapes right that are out, are now exposed by the face expression and there's actually an enumerator behind the scenes on the face expressions class that provides a lot of this information already so the other cool thing about this though is if you guys can see here on the scene view there's already an avatar with a skeleton and the reason why i wanted to see some of these is because i enable some of the debug functionality. I added the, this was already here, but the critical joint types, such as the head, the left hand index, right hand index, those were already available in there. What I ended up doing is adding the hips and basically some of the ones for the legs. Like you guys can see the on the, if I go and undo that, as you guys can see, there's one for the upper leg and then there's also someone for the ankle and also for your feet. And there's one here inside for the hips, which is this circular area in here. So if you wanted to display some of that information, so we know that it's working. Obviously, if I move my legs, it doesn't really do anything. The reason for that is because they're not, you know, doing any computer vision on that just yet. Be sure to check out the movement SDK videos that I'm going to be creating, which actually works with the Quest 2 and also are going to work for the Meta Quest Pro. So let me know in the comments if you're really interested about learning. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel because that's gonna help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Thank you very much, guys.